nice ladies uh, here in the Atlanta. And I say, yes, yes, the best. That's what happens when you own a BMW. That's what happens when you own a BMW. That's perfect. Now, this is irony for you. Bugatti only managed to sell all pipes included. And now the British rivals, the Lagonda V12 Rapide. A little bit further, if you would, please, Sir Charles. If you can come to the middle of the mosaic. Too loudly in this company, hey, <laughs> Mercedes Guru. And the raison d'etre of this class is to showcase the vogue for supercharged sports and luxury cars between the war. Do come a little bit further. Okay. 
I'd like to switch it off there, this car, I'm not going to switch, switch her off because this car is definitely a he. Now this is, we're going forward not many years, just a couple of years, this is a derivative but obviously a much sporter version of the car that you've just seen. Imposing presence, an even bigger engine, seven so much about you, very nice to meet you at last. Konstantinos is the son of the which is effectively the same model as the one we've just seen. Slightly larger engine and a few other improvements, but very much the same concept. Look how much more extravagant this car looks compared to the last one. The last one, black, somber, serious. This is something more easy. has to be the world's most successful dentist. I think he owns about 1,100 dental surgeries. I was, when I saw him in January, it was 1,100. Now we're up to 1,600. I can, I can feel some more the right dentist. exactly what weight this mosaic is capable of taking. Thank you. Do you want to just switch it off? I don't think it's a good idea, but if we don't, the jury won't have any more voice. And I'm not going to be the one to push it. <laughs> if the normal 500 or 540K wasn't big enough for you, you could order one of these. Obvious reasons. in honor of the first one of this design that won the Coppa d'Oro here at Vela d'Este way back in 1949. 1949 is the year of rebirth for the Concorde, which had taken place since 1929. After the war, life started to get back to some semblance of normality. And the what Lancia, their great rivals, were doing. The car that you see approaching now seems American, doesn't it? But actually it's not. It's a very American car. of the Bristol Aircraft Company. Bristol started making aircraft long before they made cars. After the Second World War, they Belgium's answer to Steve McQueen because he was, of course, probably the most famous owner of one of these stars. This 
was the best that money could buy in America in the late 1950s, and in particular 1959, because 59 was the year of maximum euphoria in American car styling. That's the year that these crazy fins reached the lights at the back. Consider that Americans in the 1950s, like most of the world, were obsessed by rockets. One of, one of two, one of three, two, one of two still existing in this color, which is called uranium gelb, uranium yellow. Now I am reliably informed that uranium, sorry, I should say uranium, hold on, but I would wager that this car is probably still visible from that distance. A generation of car enthusiasts, experts, and as we said before, above all, drivers. Now, in the early 1950s, this may seem surprising, but very few people even knew what a Ferrari was. If you weren't somebody from the car world, there was a good chance that you might not have heard of the brand. Enter Ferrari, after all, the Ferrari sports car design. It is, of course, David Sidoric with the Ferrari 250 GT Zagato Ferdinetta. second and sadly another one crashed in an accident that resulted in the demise of the Mille Miglia forever. This particular car was the last one of the series. Sold to the So Franco has just reminded me that the referendum for the Coppa d'Oro Miradeste is still open. Is that this car is making its European debut for the first time since the 1960s. Lovely to see you, but also, as you can see, a different age group. And I shall, I would add that he's not only a collector of beautiful cars and a handy photographer, but also a very handy driver. And he drives his cars as they were meant to be driven and beyond in many, many cases. Now, this car is. Off the ignition if you don't mind. I like the registration number by the way. Not sure the business will approve. But uh, I love the colour of the dress by the way. Perfect, perfect for the car. Great man wearing 
Daytona Spider. Look at that. Now, if that color doesn't suit you, then I'm going to say. A very flowery, lacy shirt, such as the character that drove this car. Emilia, che ha costruito queste macchine, Adolfo. Tu sei troppo giovane, ma che impressione ti fa vederle oggi? Sempre un piacere vederle. Adesso, questa è stata modificata nel frontale come succedeva all'epoca con un frontale tipo 200S però è una macchina che dà molta soddisfazione al proprietario perché nello scorso fine settimana è stato montettato oggi è a vita destra quindi è molto più usato Actually if you look more closely it's very different under the skin Aston Martin was struggling to keep up with Ferrari in the mid 1950s Ferrari with the car a little bit like David Sidorix that we saw earlier shorter to handle better and more one Porsche 356 B Carrera Abarth GTL of Robert E. Brown from the USA Here's something else rare. It's not quite as rare as the car you've just seen. The Alfa Romeo TZ1. Tubolare Zagato. Tubolare because it had a tubular frame. Zagato because Zagato made the bodywork. That's great. Thank you very much. David Eichenbaum from the States with this car. Alfa made about a hundred of these cars with Zagato responsible for the bodywork. And as I said before, it's a, it's a rare car. I was almost hoping you're going to blip those side exhausts just as you pulled up. Now, if old money and uh, wash this people, princes in particular, the working man, although the rather successful working man, aspired to own one of these, the AC Code California. And now we pass into a new class, the cars that chase. The 300 kilometer an hour barrier. Now you've never 
class with a car from the distant past of BMW, the 1938 BMW, that's wonderful, thank you, BMW 327-328 Sport Cabriolet. This was a car that was successful car importing business in New York, Madison or Park Avenue I think. He was the man who persuaded Mercedes to build the Gullwing, Porsche, the 356 Speedster and so forth. He went to BMW's management and he talked them into building a car that was supposed to be a rival to the contemporary Austin. Car, making it faster, more luxurious, but also. I want to see you in. How tall are you? Six four, about six four. Do you own this car? Yes. Do you know the word practicality? I've heard of it, yeah. So you're six foot four, and you buy a car with a motorcycle engine. Luckily, luckily with no roof, which I believe. You're not going to tell me that you drive this car any further than a Concorde Elegance, are you? Actually, we took it on the prelude tour coming from Milan to here. From here, it's like being behind the jet plane. And now, fast forward 15 years to the 1972. marketing idea that you'd have the turbo logo on the front reversed out to warn other drivers of the performance of the car that was about to overtake them. It's also, apart from being the first European product, must Jägermeister SE. Now, how is that for a ground to <laughs> What a machine! Now, it's the same color because we sit down with them now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about this. What, basically, this, you brought us a shot. <laughs>
quick and build. And if I just come around to the drivers. Now, let's have a look. What are we up to now? Five, four, one. So believe it or not, this does go against all the things that we preach about driving cars. This car has come.